back to my channel. Um, like I said in my last video, I'm going to be inviting my husband onto this video to just so just so that we can just discuss our experience and encourage and just kind of tell you practical things that we did that helped us in regards to purity in our dating courtship engagement. So first of all, I introduce you. This is Ali. Hi <laughs> right, guys, it's a privilege to be on the Soul Beauty channel with this beautiful lady. <laughs> okay, good and shy. Oh yeah, so we're just gonna so like okay, so if somebody asked you how you found like dating or engagement, what would you honestly say to them in terms of purity? I would say dating, especially engagement, was the most difficult part of the whole journey of, yeah. um, in regards to purity and um yeah. yeah, the struggle was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we struggled a lot. We kind of just have broken everything into like kind of like three, I wouldn't say steps, but just three practical measures to just ensure that you're pursuing purity in, in the right way and practically. So the first one would be setting boundaries. So I'm just going to start off with a scripture um, and that is Proverbs 6, 27. Um, to 28 and it says can a man scoop fire in his lap without his clothes being burnt or can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched so I think to me that just basically means that in order to set realistic measures you need to put things in place like you can't say uh I don't want to have sex with this person that I'm dating or engaged to yet you're staying you're sleeping in the same bed as them, do you know what I mean? So just setting practical measures that's going to ensure that you are sexually pure and, um, yeah. Because the Bible says flee from sexual sin. It doesn't say, you know, have temptation around and then see how it goes, see if you can fight it off. It <laughs> says flee from it. Exactly. So any form that you know will be a weakness, maybe your, your partner being in your house and you guys being alone. Um, like us, the boundaries we set is that we weren't allowed to be in the house alone. Because when we was, you know, as strong as we do think, you know, some of us come back from church and we're thinking, you know what, I'm, I'm on fire. We just read the word and thinking, yeah, I'm not going to, I can't fall today. And then the flesh, the flesh manifests. And I think that's actually one of the traps because I think where we were to, where we, were like in places alone and nothing would actually happen i think that's the lie that the enemy kind of gets you tricked into like oh it's cool like we can be alone and see like we've been alone loads of times and nothing's happened nothing's nearly never even nearly happened yeah. and because you've given yourself this false sense of security like it's almost like you've been side what's it side side tackled or blinds was it blindsided I don't know, but I'm bear with <laughs> just basically being side tackled where you're just caught off guard and yeah. you just end up slipping up and yeah. or just, you know, even things like just touching each other inappropriately, do you know what I mean? Like, you just have to put realistic measures in place. So, yeah, like, just to add to what Ali said, one thing that we did was just ensuring that we're not together alone. Just try not to be alone. And going back to what you were saying before, like, it's a, it could be a form of pride when you get to that place where you're like, you know, I'm not going to, you know, we're not going to fall, we're not going to sin. Yesterday it was okay, today it's alright, so, you know, we could be in a, in, a, in a place alone. Just don't let the enemy get any sort of little, little tiny crack because he would want to come through that and just mess things up. So yeah. boundaries are very important. Don't be in the house alone. Um, try not to be in the house alone. Try not to be in your room alone. Make sure people are around just so you're accountable. I'd say don't even go to, don't even go to each other's room. To be honest. Yeah, not not to like, each other's just, room. Yeah, that's not wise. Yeah, at all. And and even I would go as far as saying in terms of um, boundaries, like try not to even be physical and in any way. And I'm I'm, I'm not even saying things like hugging. Like to some people it might sound extreme, but really and truly, like if you wanna really guard and protect your purity you have to go to extreme measures sometimes so like i mean yeah just even it got to a point where we even we, we were like do you know what no hugging because 
this is, is you know our bodies are clearly not content with yeah. stopping at our height. And let me just clear it up. It's not hugging like. You know, oh, how are you doing? Hug, yeah, like you know, in terms of but like, I'm talking about that like long, long hugs yeah, holding each other because also one of uh, Debo's um, love languages is uh, a physical touch. So, um, you know, holding each other for a while, uh, yeah, obviously, just, you know, it could, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll, add, it'll, it'll add fire, it? it'll add wood to the fire, basically. So, you know what it is, also. Um, Everyone has different struggles when it comes to this. Yeah. Um, that's what I would say. It's, it's never a thing of us pointing our fingers saying, don't do this, don't do that. But during your dating and engagement period, just uh, know your struggle. Know what, you know, um, some people have different struggles. Like, Deborah, I would wink at her. And she's like, oh. No, seriously. Yeah. I just want to stop doing that. And it's not even like he was intentionally like trying to stir anything up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, he would just wink and I'm like, okay, I have to go home now. <laughs> it's not even funny, like, he just didn't understand, like, and it's not even like it was a sexual wink or anything, like, we were just, it's just like his cheeky, like, and I'll be like, because he's got such a nice smile yeah. and teeth and stuff, that so I don't know what happened when he was doing it, but that for me was like, okay, I need to stop it. Do you remember there was one time, like, we were in my car and I don't know what happened, I drove, I think the car was still moving and like, drop, she's just, dropping me home and yeah. I, he had to get, the car was moving she and I was like, me out the car, get guys. out and I think at that moment like we were alone in a car and something <laughs> started happening inside of me and I literally she pushed me out of the car, guys. It was some Mission Impossible. You know when the, the action movie when you roll out the car? No, seriously. <laughs> it was yeah. one of them ones. Yeah, she pushed me out of the and car. And one guys. thing as well that helped, I think this is, we did this when we got engaged. And like when like purity was getting, like just being pure was getting so so difficult for us we actually took a fast from each other so by that it was literally like we did it like once or twice i think where we would literally cut communication with each other mm. for like three days and we just use that as a period to just kind of get just sit in front of god and just go to him for strength and like just be real with god and be like this is so difficult just to like mm. refocus and you know what I mean? Like that really helped as well. If, mm. Yeah, that really helped. Just kind of, um, obviously, it might not work for everybody, but that's something we did. Just kind of fasting from each other. And some people might think, oh man, these guys like they couldn't get their hands off each other. But honestly, being real um, and you know putting all the 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 Christian facades or whatever to the side, like we are two human beings who are attracted to each other. Exactly. God's given us sexual desires. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just using it in its right context. Uh, a book that I was reading is um, <clears throat> a book called um, Sex is Not the Problem, Lust Is by Joshua Harris. Um, and it talks about us being given a sexual desire by God and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just using it in its right context. Mm -hmm. And sex is not the problem. Sex, the desire to have sex um, is a gift, you know, that's been given to God, um, to us by God. Um, but it's lust that is the issue. Yeah, lust always wants, it takes, it's complete opposite it's to love. Right. So, um, so yeah, so that's boundaries, definitely putting boundaries in place. The second mm. part um, we would speak on is um, accountability. So, mm. yeah, Ali's just going to read the scripture for us. Uh, the scripture is uh, Proverbs twelve fifteen, and it says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Um, yeah. He who seeks counsel is wise. It's very, very important to um, be accountable, to have people around you that can be real with you, that can tell you, listen, you're messing up, or uh, not always condemn you, but always lift you up as well. Uh, just have that right balance of knowing how to rebuke you in love and tell you the truth, yeah. but also encouraging you and lifting you up as well when you're just feeling like, you know what, I'm just feeling down and out and, and beaten up by sin. Definitely. Um, I just add to what Ali said, I would definitely encourage like having like an accountability partner or buddy, maybe somebody who's been there before you, not like, I don't personally think it's wise to go, for example, when I was dating, um, I think it's probably very foolish to go to a friend who's also dating and is struggling with lust because we're in the same boat as each other so I would encourage you to go to somebody who has probably gone through that path already like maybe a more matured um, 
older woman, like for me, I went to a more mature older woman who was like married and stuff. So, and we would um, pray and fast together every Monday. And um, yeah, so I would. She was, a I would, blessing, she was amazing. Yeah, she was Big a up, Morena. <laughs> but um, so like she would pray with me, fast with me every Monday, and um, it just gave me an opportunity to also be real with her. I mean, I remember one which we'll, we'll cover soon, but one thing she said to me is like, it's very hard for me to know what I'm praying for if you don't tell me like the truth. So mm. I would be so real, even when it was embarrassing or like I felt uncomfortable to tell her kind of my experiences. I was just be real with her and tell her, do you know what? This is what I'm going through. I'm, I'm finding it really hard. Um, I'm really like consumed by lust. And she was such a blessing. She would pray with me, fast with me every Monday. Our pastor was also very amazing. We would have um, yeah. meetings with him like every other Thursday, and where we had an opportunity to just also be honest and be like, Pastor, like this is hard, you know. Yeah, and yeah. he would pray with us and yeah, yeah. <laughs> being able to be open with someone. Um, <clears throat> for me it was my best man uh, Leo, good friend of mine um, and I had my brother Jack a few people um, that are uh, one of my boys um, that are married and have been through it um, and they would just give me so much sound advice telling me listen like when you're in a place where you feel like you know it's going to get peak don't be afraid to just run out the house things yeah. like that you know and uh, it's so important to have people around sort of real you know, and people that are not like, oh my days, we never did that. You yeah, know? and I think you guys are sinners. Yeah, God, stay away, and I think I'm that's saying. like, not to say, well, yeah, and I think that's why I found it probably really hard in the beginning because I felt like I was in an environment where I couldn't really be real mm. with people like that because it was kind of like, oh, lust. What is that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> is that a type of sauce? <laughs> is that some type of sauce? <laughs> but um. Yeah, I just yeah, I just feel yeah. like it's so important to just have real people around, not people that are gonna condone yeah, sin, yeah, yeah, yeah. but people that are gonna walk you through it, pray you through it, encourage you through it, also mm. be real like do you know thank God for like Christians who are real because mm. I thought I felt like I was a weirdo like on my days and last because I think one thing for me, because I was single for so long, I didn't realise that lust was actually dormant in me i felt like it was something that was being dealt with because i never had a man in my life that i was you know attracted to or in a relationship so i didn't think that lust would still be an issue so when i started dating ali i'll probably say when we got engaged and lust was really trying to shake you know shake something I was like, oh my days, what is happening? And I just felt like a weirdo. I felt like, oh my days, I can't be real with people mm. because they're going to judge me. So what happens is you keep it to yourself and then you end up struggling. And before you know it, you're entangled. Do you know what I mean? And that is what the enemy desires. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to actually go into our last part, which is confession. Um, so the Bible says, um, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy another which is proverbs 28 verse 13 and another scripture is um james 5 16 which says therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed the prayer the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective so you know there's so much power in confession what the enemy what is for you to feel so embarrassed so ashamed that you don't tell anybody because you feel like you're going to be judged or condemned and then you actually find yourself trapped in sin and that is the enemy's plan that is his strategy but you just need to find real people around you that love god mm. that are going to be honest with you that are going to rebuke you if needed that are going to pray with you mm. do you know what i mean and i'm just so grateful that, that that was what we had and um also sorry to cut you just knowing that um god is merciful yeah um like when you look at genesis at the beginning uh with adam and eve when they realized that you know they they were naked yeah, they it's because they did something that god told them not to do they disobeyed god the first thing they've done 
was went to hide. Yeah. They wanted to be away from God. And that's us in our sin sometimes. We hide because we're of because of our shame. We see our nakedness of the nakedness of our sin and how much it's, it's like obviously like imagine yourself being naked on the road. It's embarrassing. <laughs> like and people seeing like what the heck like can you see that you've got no clothes on? It's embarrassing. So what you want to do is hide away yeah. from people, hide away from God. Um, and the more you stay in that hidden place the more you get to a place where you're like, you know, God, can God really forgive me? Like, how many times am I going to sin against God in this specific area and he's going to keep forgiving me? How many times do I have to confess and he's going to keep forgiving me? Exactly. But God is all powerful and merciful. Like, his mercies are new every day. Definitely. Every morning, his mercies are new. So yeah. there's nothing that is too... There's nothing that is too deep, no sin that is too deep for God yeah. not to forgive us. Exactly, for. and I think God, I can't remember what scripture it is, but it, um, I'll, put, I'll put it in the, what, in the link on, on the screen, where the Bible says that, um, thank God that we have a high priest who is able to sympathise with mm. us in our weaknesses because not only does he know how it feels, but he's also you know gone through it experienced it yet he did not sin mm. and that's ultimately my great joy just knowing that i was going through a season of struggle mm. in terms of lust and it was consuming me to the point i was like am i actually a christian do you know what i mean mm. and um but god is so faithful and and what i would encourage you is there is so much power in just being real and confessing mm -hmm. like whatever spectrum of lust you are struggling with whether that is lust to the point where you know you're you're having inappropriate conversations or maybe touching each other inappropriately like god is able or, or even like maybe you've you've fornicated do you know what i mean like confess because mm -hmm. like there's nothing that is done in darkness that is not brought to light and you're actually setting yourself up by not confessing like the sooner you nip sin in what in the butt yeah. like the sooner it can be dealt with so mm -hmm. that's why i'm so grateful that god placed us around people that we could be real with that when we were to the point when we were so consumed with lust that it's like do you know what i'm not going to keep this feeling of that i'm struggling to myself anymore yeah. like it's time to confess even if this conversation is uncomfortable but do you know what sister so and so i'm finding it really difficult right now because i'm having all types of mad thoughts i'm having all types of emotion we want to do this and do like i remember like sorry to be if it sounds a bit crude but i remember being on the phone with my friend and i was like this is so difficult like i just want to have sex with him and and do you know what i mean and that is how much i was being consumed and she was able to not judge me and be like oh my gosh that's so disgusting or, <laughs> do you know what i mean but yeah. she was like do you know what Deborah? i know what you're going through you know i know it's real let me pray for you do you know what i mean and she prayed for me and I, and, and I just feel like just that's such an important thing get around people that you can have real conversations with because if you can't be real people don't know what they're praying for we'll just be struggling by ourselves there in, in silence and before you know it you are caught up in this whole entangled and you can't you know it becomes a stronghold and you can't be you know do you know what I mean set free from it so definitely get around people that you can be real with and confess your sins, confess your thoughts, confess conversations that you've had, confess, you know, inappropriate behaviour to one another that you've had, just so that you can, you know, keep catching Satan out, because mm. the more you try to conceal your sin, the deeper you are digging a hole for yourself, and before you know it, you are in this place, and you're like, how the heck did I get here, mm. but at whatever stage or level you are at, there is mercy for you, mm. there is grace for you, but you have to confess, you have to take practical steps and measures to pursue purity because God honours that as well. So, And yeah. also realising that we are not perfect, uh, but we do serve a perfect God. You exactly. know, Jesus uh, went exactly like what Deborah said in the scripture. He said, we have a high priest that sympathises with us because he knows Jesus went through every temptation that we go through today and in that he didn't sin, you know, um, so he understands um, you know uh in short like there is no sin no circumstance nothing that we can go through that nothing that can consume us that God 
has not seen like there's nothing new under the sun like there's no situation that you can bring to god that he cannot help you with like god has come to you know set the captives free do you know what i mean so i just want you guys who are watching this video whether you are single and struggling with lust dating engaged like at whatever season or you know whatever or um even married yeah true um yeah, lust doesn't end when you get yeah, married yeah it doesn't <laughs> so yeah, just know that God is faithful, but you also have to play your part. You can't just be like, oh, God, help me with lust or help me. I'm struggling. And you're not actually practically trying to take measures to ensure that you are pure. Like when it comes to if there's one thing that I've learned from Joseph is when it comes to sexual purity, you have to be like militant like Whoa. like when people hear the word flee you think that's like lightly jogging or running away to flee literally means like to get away aggressively like to the point his his shirt or his top his singlet or whatever was torn completely so that is just kind of a demonstration of how aggressive he was when it came to pursuing sexual purity so we just want to encourage you that there is so much there is so much hope there is so much grace for you like god is able you just have to like i said in the first video understand the purpose of um purity and then pursue it do you get what i'm saying like god is faithful he's available he's there but you also have to play your part so um yeah is there anything you want to add to it um no uh, just add uh, carrying on to what deborah said um, God's grace is sufficient um, and His grace is able to hold us and keep us, uh, so keep fighting the good fight. Um, be encouraged guys, you are not alone, so Trust don't me. get into a mindset where you're like, we're the only ones going through this, yeah, you're not they, alone. They just won't tell you, like, yeah. I don't know if it's because they want to look like they're perfect or yeah. they don't struggle or, you know, holier than thou, but, yeah. do you know what I mean? Thank God for people like Paul mm. in the Bible. Do you know what I mean? He said, I'm the chief sinner. He had a thorn in his flesh. We don't know what that thorn was. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Some Bible scholars say it might have been a particular sin or what we don't know. But these things are put in the Bible for our encouragement, mm. for our empowerment to know like, do you know what I mean? The Bible is so real. The Holy Spirit is so real that he empowers us. He gives us the grace and strength to say no to ungodliness, no to sin and mm. pursue purity and righteousness. It was nice having you actually film with me. Thanks for having me. Now you could be a video girl in one of my videos. Hello. <laughs> Groupie. Well. <laughs> but yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. I hope you were encouraged by this video. And yeah, thank you Ali for joining us today. Anytime. God bless you. Bye. Bye.